the crystals of creation have revealed themselves. Evils emerge across the multiverse. The armies of the abyss gather. The Underdark's plans are near fruition. Chaos erupts across all spheres, and darkness descends on the plains. Alliances are forged in blood. The gods move avatars like pawns on a board, and unlikely heroes emerge to thwart the unstoppable. But will it be enough before the material plane crumbles? The hopes rest in a group of wayward adventurers. The battle of the Outlands awaits. Our adventurers escape from the clutches of the Illithid forces with the help of the Githyanki, who told them to head to Clanks. There, Timmy set up shop, Charles tore into Sybil's neck, and Jace stopped by to say hi. While our adventurers travel to the Radiant Citadel, unravel the plans of the Illithid, or end up starting a vampire coven, only time will tell. So we last left you guys off, Sybil ran away with uh, her healed neck down below deck. Uh, there was a bit of a scrum between uh, Jay and Charles, and Jace kind of got in the middle, and he pointed to this towering crystalline structure and stated that you were to bring your orbs and meet him on over there to head towards the Radiant Citadel, which you have no idea what it is. Yeah, so he points off in the direction and says we should meet there. Um, let me set the scene of, so there's, there's five asteroids and there's these metal bridges that attach all of them. In the center is a bar with a neon sign that says Clanks. This is a very busy happening place right now. More than you saw last time, there is a lot of merchants setting up, a lot of people milling about. Uh, Timmy is below the deck there. Uh, he's set up. He's setting up shop. There is a blue, taller figure uh, eyeing his wares, talking to Timmy. Igor is down below. Um, and what do you guys wish to do? Um... And like the Radiant Citadel, does it seem like a place we could walk to, like the metal bridges connect to the Citadel, or is that like a far place we'll have to sail the ship to? Um, it seems like he, this uh, crystalline structure, which kind of looks like a, a skyscraper that's lounging inside of this asteroid, is going to take you to the Radiant Citadel. Um, well, I suppose we'll all gather our crystals then um so are we just going to show them off to the council at the citadel or what's going on here jace well jace they're not gonna they're not gonna take them are they jace looks and he's like i don't think that's what they want there i believe that the councils want to talk about what is going on and what happened here where the phlogiston and turned into the Astral Sea. What are the plans? Where to go from here? Uh, I was just here to inform you that we we should go pretty soon down there. And as he does, um, why does one of you roll me a perception check? I mean, I would. Lo I'd hate to take anyone's pilot, but I would love to do it. No, go ahead. I'll allow it this time. <laughs> Thank you. I never get to do this. Uh, 29. Damn. Uh, so you see coming up the deck is uh, Gareth, uh, the Gith Yankee that you met here earlier, uh, many weeks ago before Eberron, and he took you towards into the Astral Sea to help destroy the um, Creation Forge. And he comes up and he goes, He's like, well, I don't see what the rush is. I think I owe these men a beer. What do you think, guys? And he walks right past Jace towards you guys and puts his hand out towards you, Jay. 
Is it the right hand or the wrong hand? Uh, let's go with the wrong hand. Because he, he doesn't know. Yeah, so Jay kind of like, from his rose, his like turns a little bit so he couldn't see he's missing a hand. And he reaches out with the wrong hand to shake it, <laughs> like he, weirdly. He like looks at it, he's like, oof, uh, seemed like you didn't leave uh, Shard Sphere without a little bit of uh, some damage. I hope, uh, hope everything went well. Could have gone worse. I believe I'm technically dead, but at least I'm still walking. Well, how about that beer? Kurgan, how about you? Uh, yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll, I'll have a drink with you. Uh, this is the guy that had the, uh, the dragons and whatnot. Oh, yes. This is Gareth, the one who was... Yeah. He's an older Gith Yankees, lots of scars. Uh, his robe is made out of like intertwined leather tentacles that kind of uh, are braided together to make this long cloak. He's got his vorpal sword on his side and another vorpal sword on his other side. He dual wields it. Uh, long grayish hair for a Gith Yankee. Don't really see many old Gith Yankee. Awesome, cool. I was I just wanted to make sure that my notes were like good and they were there you go okay so i go with him i I, t I get a drink yeah he claps you on the back he's like uh whoever's with me let's go drinks are on me and he leads you down the gangplank to where his other men are waiting uh so kurgan's going uh charles yeah I better go just to make sure that it is a quick drink and jay do you guys want me to come with, and, or do you want me to protect the ship? Alcohol doesn't really do anything for me anymore. Oh, um, don't be a party pooper. Come on. Your ship uh, will be fine. Insight check. <laughs> okay, go for it. Your ship will be fine. Nothing bad could possibly happen. That didn't roll. Come on, work with me here. It's not rolling, and I'm... <laughs> There it is, the first one, yeah, uh, the, 14. So, 14. So, what you get is that he's barely confident that nothing's going to happen here. He's like, listen, we have plenty of people nearby. You, If you want to stay, that's fine. But uh, there's a lot of people worried about more than your ship right now. There's, their whole world is just done turning inside out. They have no, they're lost. Uh, come join us. This is welcome to the Astral Sea. We'll show you around. Come on. And he's already leaving. And if you don't, so be it. And he's already down the game plan. Uh, Jay, I guess we'll, uh, head forward and go with the party. Okay. And as you go by, all three of you guys, uh, you hear Timmy is haggling pretty hard with this blue figure on uh, several of these crates and as you go by and Timmy nods to you as uh, he sees and you guys make your way deeper into the merchants uh, and these merchants are spread all throughout uh, setting up and if somebody else can roll me a perception beside uh, Jay because you already rolled one Charles, yeah, it's it's never gone wrong when Charles has rolled anything. Yeah. You can't name yeah. a single time. I'm going never. Okay, okay. Maybe okay. So uh, you you hear a lot of people are very worried. You hear there is uh, two merchants meet up with each other right next to you as you're passing by, and they clap each other on the shoulders and talk about their families and, like, how, how are you? What's going on? They're like, we have no idea. Uh, we got lost. The, the Astral Sea overwhelmed us. We, we knew we, we, we had to figure out how to, to find somewhere to meet up, so we decided to come here. How about you? And they're like, yeah, same here. We knew about Clank, so we just decided to come here. I'm, Pretty sure more people are going to show up here trying to get a bearing on uh, where everybody is because everything is all over the place. And as you go by, you, you catch that conversation. You go into Clanks and 
Now, before Clank's was a bar with beer and everything and standard bar, but as you go in, it looks like it's more of a, a there's poker tables now, there's gambling, and there is in the corner, there's a Modron. He's playing this bass guitar and he's singing about mud. He's like, you know, singing something about mud. And he, there's, there's Clank. He's at the bar. He's got a towel over. He's a turtle, older turtle, wrinkly face. Uh, he's pouring a drink. And there's this guy there, taller, a uh, little overweight. And he's got glasses. And he's got like a uh, Hawaiian shirt. And he's sitting there and he's got like seven different empty glasses next to next to him. And Gareth po- pulls up next to the bar and says, ah, drinks for all my friends over here. And all of a sudden Clank looks up and goes, oh my goodness. Is it not the bonded? It is so good to see you. Uh, yeah, you too, buddy. How did it go down in Eberron? It went well enough, I think. Mostly a success. Yeah. Did, did you kill any of these mind flares? Yeah, I think we got a couple. Got a few mind flares. Got a lot of servants with mind flares. Oh, excellent. Good job. Excellent job. Looks so, like uh, business is booming. Yes. Uh, had to change things up. It looks like the food and drink are not going to be selling here in the Astral Sea. Not many people are hungry here. They are thirsty. So, had to switch it up. And now, going with the gambling theme. Gambling's always fun. No, yes, it is. So. It's good to see you guys. So, what can I do for you? Um, I believe we were coming here to get a drink. Uh, do you still happen to have anything in the back? Oh, my shop is always open to you. Come, if you need to go to the back, that is fine. I'm pretty much just giving away my food and drink here for practically nothing. It's useless here. I mean, who thought about opening a bar in a place where people don't get hungry or thirsty? I mean, I guess that's true, but just because you're not thirsty doesn't mean you don't want some alcohol in you. That's true. Yeah. Well, what would you like? Uh, what's the strongest stuff you have? Oh, that is the ink blot. Ooh, sounds interesting. I'll have that, please. And he, mm-hmm. pours, he, he takes out this very small thimble-like glass, and he pours just like a, a like a droplet with a like a what are those eye droplets? And he puts like three drop in one and slides it over to you on the house. Thanks. Uh, even though it's like very small, he's just going to be looking at the mountain. He's going to be like, okay, all right. Uh, want to do it at the same time? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Go ahead, come down. Gareth is looking <clears throat> oh, and he's like, Eyeball, eye on you guys. Go for it. Three, two, one. Tips it back. Cheers. <laughs> Constitution saving throws, boys. Yeah. Let's do it. Uh, 15s. Yeah, I'm looking for 15s. Nice. I got a 12. Oh, <laughs> wow. The wizard out drinking the barbarian. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. oh no. What, what's going on here? Uh, well, Charles just had a, very, a pretty thrilling meal, and so uh, he's That's feeling true. good, and uh, just knocks this back. And how about you, Kyrgyz? Uh, well, well, I guess Kyrgyz would have like a bit of a nap earlier, because like he was like, 
tired and worn out and everything, but he woke up not long ago, he came down, first thing he decided to do was have a drink, and he's already just on his back after a thimble full. <laughs> and a couple good get the Yankees, catch you from front before you hit the ground, stag push you back up, and Gareth is laughing. He's like, I'll have I'll have a couple of ales around for everybody. And he throws a like a bunch of coins on the table, they rattle and come to a stop, and uh Clank's like Always appreciate it, Gareth. And he starts uh, filling up mugs and passing them all around. And wow, that was that was something. And that was pretty good. And oh, good with that one. Why don't uh, Kyrgyz roll me a perception uh, check with disadvantage? Perception, you say? Fifteen, please. There's my button. Bam. Eighteen. With it, with disadvantage? Oh no, I forgot to do that, sorry. Um, 24 now, so yeah, it's 18 with wow. disadvantage. Wow, okay. Hey. You, you see, uh, as you are trying to get your equilibrium, that there is probably about six or seven orcs around a table, and they are eyeing you guys a little bit, and then uh, kind of elbowing another person, and now another person looks up from their cards in your direction. Are any of these the triplets? No. No, nah. triplets. no triplets. Those are still on ever. <laughs> no, these are uh, orcs. They're uh, your standard orc men. Bit bigger than the Dakani uh, in size. Uh, wearing leather armor, swords on their side, just playing cards with each other right now, and a dealer is dealing out. Looks like, I don't know the game, but that's what you got. Nice roll. Thank you. So Gareth's like, hey, well, tell me what happened on Neveron. Oh, there was a lot of stuff. Um, all right, so uh, one of the first things that we did was uh, we decided to, for some reason, jump out of the ship uh, into this huge city of towers. Um, we landed on top, uh, but there was like some sort of a, uh, a military training camp up there or something. I don't know, it was weird. And we just landed in the middle of them as they were performing some sort of a, a, a drill to protect themselves against like people falling out of the sky. Uh, uh, we, we were turned invisible by um, uh, uh, Charles, I think, and but th that didn't help because we just landed in the middle of them anyway. So they just like, it was insane. We, we had to run around. We were found out by a, a, a lady named Press. Um, she flashed us with a flashy thingy, uh, uh, get him out of the gutter. And that was an experience. That was like the first day. Yeah. Uh, wow. Quite a fiasco. Then we got some popcorn. Yeah. 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 Where? When does the Astral Sea taking over the Flagistan come in? Well, after that? Yeah. Oh, well, well, so, after that. yo, so far after that. Well, another uh, round. And, you, <laughs> and uh, orders another round. There's some food coming out uh, and he's like well well here it's been utterly crazy we, we were on the other side of things we were in the astral sea and then all of a sudden the these worlds started to appear out of nowhere expanding the astral sea doubling it and tripling it even though it's so expense, expansive to begin with now we, we've already had our enough on our plate with these lifted and now with all these universes to deal with uh, it's quite an undertaking i'm working with darvik he's one of my uh Gith yankee uh brethren and we're working together to help uh, eliminate these lifted if you can help us point us in any direction of like what their purpose is and because we know 
this originated from Eberron when you were down there. Charles, you still have that paper, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There are the battle numbers. Here, here. I'll pull out the, uh, uh, there's, we got a cookbook and the, uh, battle arrangements, right? So I'll pull out both of those. Oh. Let me, let me see the battle arrangements first, but that cookbook looks interesting. I can definitely read, uh, all of it. Let me, let me read this. Yeah, great. There you go. Oh, this is in a cipher. Hmm. Oh no, wait, did you give him the other book that's in the cipher? No. No, oh, okay. So yes, I, yeah, I gave him the cipher uh, one. Oh, okay. He's like, ah, this is going to take a little while for me to, uh, break through the, through this. It's not, I'm more of a on the field battle, uh, not the brains of the operation, but why don't you hold on to that? Uh, let me see this. Ooh, okay. We definitely need more numbers in this direction. I see this could be useful. Is it all right if I hold on to this? Um, yeah, yeah, I think it would do y'all more good than me. Yeah, he folds it up and puts it in his uh, bag and he's like, is there anything that we could do for you? Um, actually, I, uh, I don't know if this is a bit much of an ask, but do you have any sort of magical items that could help us kill more Isolids? I get a feeling that this war is only just starting. It's, it's a war of attrition now. Uh, we've lost many men, uh, many Gith Yankee in this battle so far. I'm sorry, I don't have much to spare besides you are one of the most powerful magical items known, so I heard. We should be asking. You, uh, you don't have a, a, a spare Vulcan sword? Mm. I'm sorry, but <laughs> you need to be part of the Gift Thank You. We don't look kindly on those that are not one of us to be wielding our sword. I'm sorry. All right, all right, fair, fair, fair. Um. Yeah, Kyrgyz is going to be looking to see if there's any, like, lady get the Yankee here. Maybe he can get, like, a <laughs> Mary and or get a, Mary <laughs> just to get a Vorpal sword. Okay. Yo, okay. he's playing the long game. Why don't you roll me a, uh, let the dice decide. Roll me a hundred-sided die, please. Let's see. Let's see it. One. Oh, really? Literally one. Wow. Okay. I gotta think. Um, you see, there is in your inebriated state the best looking Gith Yankee woman you've ever seen. Uh, okay. Kyogen in his, uh, his drunken stupor, he's gonna sort of wobble his way over to her, uh, and introduce himself. Okay. Uh, and she's got a hooded hood on and this beautiful gift Yankee face, which is, and you sit down and what do you say? Hey, how's it going? She looks up and she's like, uh, it's going well. Um, can I help you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I am, uh, I'm kind of new in town and uh, I want to know if, uh, Anyone around here could give me like a rundown of the place? Uh, have a seat. And she's like, my name is Soldana. Soldana? Yes. It's uh, a nice name. I'm also new to this area. I came from the Flodgestin. My, my people are scattered around and I was tasked uh, to come, come here and look for these people called the bonded do you know it these people yeah i i uh, i've heard of them i've heard of them maybe we can help each other then uh can you point them me in that direction i was given much information other than they would be riding uh a ship like ours and she looks her hood back a little bit, and she looks like a Gith Yankee to you. Okay, is that a, a side effect of this drink? Everyone looks like a Gith Yankee. Uh, just <laughs> yeah, when you roll a one on a D one hundred, sure, sure does. Okay, uh, Kogan's gonna say, oh, uh, 
Okay, well, uh, I, I think I definitely saw a ship like that pulling earlier. In fact, I think uh, uh, some of the people over there, you see the uh, the Goliath over there with the, the weird hand thing? I'm pretty sure that I, I've heard him be called a bonded. Oh, oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, want me to introduce you? Yeah, that would be great. And before you do that, uh, Jay, you kind of are eyeing Kirin getting up. And as he sits down with this hooded figure, uh, she lifts her hood back a little bit. And she's got blonde hair and pointy ears. And then all the orcs who are playing cards stand up and put their hands on their swords and begin to walk towards Jurgen. Uh, Jay uh, walks forward and clears his throat to get the um, orcs' attention. <clears throat> uh, excuse me, gentlemen. Um, do they stop moving as he stands up and kind of goes over? Uh, what what role should we, we do here? I mean, yeah, that's a fair... I think, I think either persuasion or, like... Because what Jay just wants to do is he wants to get their attention yeah. before something happens. Yeah, okay, why don't you roll a persuasion, uh, and I will roll as well, add a three to this roll, five. Uh, okay, 13. so... so th yeah, they stop halfway there, they eye you, uh, a couple like elbow and stop and face you while three others keep making their way to Kyrgyz who is still in deep conversation with this one. Uh, uh I do, I do. Charles. Let's go with Charles too. Okay. Charles, what do you want to do? Uh, I'm hanging back at the bar and you said it looked like a, uh, she had elven ears, blonde hair, and then the six orcs got up. Uh, yeah, I'm sure Jay, you pointed that out, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll just hang back at the bar. Okay. And, uh, I'll pull out my little copper wire and just try to settle a message to him. Hey, uh, keep chatting them up. We might have a problem. Kerrigan's muted. He's muted himself on Discord, don't know. Bugger. Uh, uh, Kerrigan's <laughs> gonna keep chatting up this, uh, uh, evidently elven woman that he still thinks is a gift. And um, yeah, she stops as and she sees these orcs uh, as you're making, going to make your way over to your friend with her. Uh, and she kind of holds your bicep a little bit as and kind of goes a little bit behind you, putting you in front of her. As oh, yeah, these, it's all coming together. These three orcs get move right up to you and they're like excuse me but i think you have an elf behind you may we please speak to her bonded um keegan's gonna like he's gonna like huh and he's gonna turn and look at who he thought was a giffy yankee does he see the elven features now or is this like no no is he... not with the one not with that one God, how, how would Kibbukin react to this? Like, an elf? Uh, he turns around and looks like... To him, he's actually, like, looking to try and see one, but to them, he's, it probably seems like he's being a massive dick. Like, being like, huh, I don't, I don't see an elf, huh? That one must be way over there, maybe outside, huh? Hmm. Uh, well, if you can go and find them, then sure, you can go talk to them, but me and my friend, we're just gonna go over here. Okay, Jay, what are you doing? Um, it appears you gentlemen have a problem with that woman over there. Um, and I just want to ask, before anything happens, what exactly are your intentions with her just before anything bad happens in this lovely establishment we are all at? Okay, we'll still use that same persuasion role here that you won, and the bigger of the orcs steps up and he's like, we wish no ill here now. We are the Scrow, and we are just here to talk. The time for fighting is not now. But there 
and he points over in Kyrgyz in the elf's direction. That is a woman of the Elven Imperial Navy, and they cannot be trusted. We just want to talk to her. Uh, insight check. Okay. Roll. Uh, his his main thing, he doesn't care of Elven Imperial Navy. He's main like, do they, are they honestly going to be innocent and not actually throw a hand? Okay. 13. Okay. Um, well, it's, it's hard for you to really tell what's going to happen in the future, but he seems like he is sincere. He doesn't have his weapon out. He is, his hand is close to his sword in, in more of a reactive than a proactive stance. All right, um, and just to make sure everything keeps calm, uh, uh, Kurgan, um, I believe you might be a little in need, but this is the woman that they're looking for, and they do not wish any ill will, they just wish to talk. Um, madam, is, they do not wish to harm you, and if they even make the attempt, we can easily protect you. Well, not easily, you look very strong, but I, that wasn't a slight against you. But, <laughs> I do believe we can protect you. So... Do you wish to talk with these gentlemen? And she gives a little smirk at that. She goes, of course, uh, I am an emissary from Admiral Leafbauer. And we are here to strike an accord with in a truce we, with the bonded. And of course, with the Skrull, who we have been through numerous wars with. We are scattered throughout the Astral Sea. But there, we need to talk, and we need to talk someplace quietly. And I don't wish to mix elven biz- business with the scroll. We are mortal enemies, and while we don't wish to fight at this moment, I do not wish or trust them. Did she say, out of all of that, I was writing a lot of that down, did she say she's willing to talk with the scroll, I believe? She's willing to talk, but she's in, in put the fighting aside. But, yeah, but she wants to talk to us privately. She's, she's really there, here for you. She didn't expect the scroll to be here. She looks surprised at the scroll. Well, Can I see what I know about this Imperial Elven Sure. You can roll me a history, please. All right. 18? 18. Okay. So you know it, but how do you know it? How'd you find this out? Uh, well, I'll, I'll think like a space navy. Yeah. Okay. So uh, in his study of the cosmos and the universes and whatever, I'm sure that it would have been in several sources that he uh, discovered as he was beginning to learn about how to travel between worlds and everything. Yeah. So you know that there was a many different wars between the elves and the orcs and the uh, goblins and hobgoblins throughout wild space until the until the elves came on top, like dominated and became the most prevalent force throughout all of wild space in the phlogiston. And they, no one could touch them in technology and numbers and just sheer, uh, just firepower. And so they were the elite forces of the phlogiston. Oh, uh, sorry, uh, Charles, continue if you're going to say something about that. I apologize. No, he was just, he was just, he's still sitting at the bar, sipping on a drink and thinking and watching. I believe that a conversation between this crow and an emissary of the Imperial Navy might, though it's unlikely, might yield fruitful results. And I believe my crew are willing to discuss with you about whatever truce you wish to Take, but we are but one ship. Uh, in the scroll says, We saw you first. Leave, leave the elf behind. We well, wish to parley with you in time. All three of us, we can all talk. Is there is there another party in here that wanted to talk to us? 
and like there there's the uh there's this thry king uh insectoid and he raises his hand he goes i'll i'll talk to you if you want to talk cool all right so uh one second quick uh quick uh bonded huddle and i'll call over <laughs> and Jay. Yeah, all right, we get in our huddle. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I make sure good. that the elf is on the other side of our huddle compared to the scro, and I say, "All right, just just give me a moment." Uh, and yeah, you mean the Githy Yankee? <laughs> well, I I think she's a Githy Yankee, yeah. but yeah, I'm just saying it just so that everyone actually knows what's going on. And Gareth is leaning against the bar, drinking, just observing and smiling and seeing what's going to happen. All right, guys, we can't take too long because we have to get to this uh, meeting of mages. But uh, who wants which group? I have it with the elves or uh, this insect guy. He seems cool. All right, now uh, I'll put out there that the, the scribe do seem a little on edge about things. But honestly, I don't know anything about either group. I feel like we should get both groups to try and sell themselves to us at the same time and see if like we just keep things peaceful but we see who offers the better benefits because right now all i know is that's an elf and that's a group of orcs do you like point when you say yeah he points to the elf and the <laughs> yes can i make some sort of a check to see like if i believe them or if i think that they're just like what do you want to roll it's got to be with disadvantage but what what do you want to roll <sighs> I don't, I don't know what it would be. Um, uh, in, in, no, investigation? No, I think you're trying to, I think you're trying to intelligence or be like, you're trying to see through things. Like you're taking his words and trying to see, wait, they keep saying elf. Uh, I want to see how smart, if you can figure this out. So give me uh, an intelligence with disadvantage 15. All right, I've got plus zero, let's do it. I got a 15. Okay, so you're working it out in your head and the, it starts to click like, okay, something's going on here. Everybody sees as elf, but apparently I see you did it. So you're, you're putting two and two together. Huh, hmm, yeah. Uh, well, I was already talking to the elf so if we do split up i think i would stick with her so uh, jay the only thing with them selling themselves is that it turn into a competition and uh well competitions can get heated pretty quickly if we do not want wish for competition then perhaps we meet with them separately and each give them their own chance to pitch with us but i don't think we should decide this right away yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. Is we each stood up and take a group, and they sell to us, and then we reconvene. Then we reconvene, perhaps we go to the Radiant Citadel, think yeah. about it, then get back to them. Yes, yeah, that's what I was thinking. And Gareth is taking bets right now on uh, <laughs> <laughs> how it's going to work out. He puts his right. one hand in the middle in the middle of the huddle. <laughs> right, so wait, Jordan, you wanted the uh, the elf. Yes. Yes, I very much do. All right, Jay, do you want the, uh, the scroll or, uh, Mr. Thrakery rocking over there? Uh, I can, I can take the scroll. Uh, they seem like my kind of people. All right, sounds good. Bonded on three. One, two, three, bonded. 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 There it is. <laughs> okay. Perfect um, timing. So... Let's go with Kurgan first. What do you what do you want to do? Uh, okay, I turn back around and I say, uh, all right, uh, while my uh, friends here uh, uh, deal with uh, the orcs and all that, why don't you and I sit down and have a drink and have a chat ourselves? Okay, sounds good. Uh, another ale here, and uh, Gareth slides an ale over to her. It's like, where, where do you want to sit? Uh, I just sit at a little sort of private table with me and her, if, okay. they, if that exists. Yep, 
And as they're finding a place to sit, uh, Jay, what are you doing? Uh, Jay will go over to the scroll. Um, uh, do you all want a round? Or... Oh, we would love a round. Please, make it strong. Uh, Jay go- looks over to the, uh, to all the Giffy Yankee currently. He just goes, oh, they're taking bets now, cool. Um, and looks over at Glenn and goes, uh, can we get a round of your strongest for these good gentlemen here? It is always custom that we have a drinking contest. This might be a little unfair for you, but I'll take you up on that offer. Unfair, I have never lost. Come on! And they take you to a table. And Charles, what are you doing? I'm just going over to the, uh, to the dry cream. Yep. And uh, dude, just... Well, how's it going? You want to drink? Uh, I'm Charles. No, I do, do not want to click, clack, click, 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 clack, click, 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 uh, drink. Please. Let's go and sit down. Let's go over here. And he leads you to like this lounger where you can kind of lay down and he sits next to it and he brings out a notepad. He's like, you click, 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 wanted to talk? Hey, please sit. And he puts you to this lounger. Okay. I'm also gonna pull out a notebook. He just kind of like play that. And then immediately, so if I can make them, if there's a pillow nearby, I'll just grab the pillow and I hug it. It's turned into a therapy session. <laughs> and he turns over like this uh, timer. He's like, okay, <laughs> time to tell me where it first started. And, and he starts talking to you that way. And uh, let's go to Kurgan. So she's drinking an ale, and slowly, she's kind of sipping on it, she's like, so, my name is Soldana, and I was tasked here from Admiral Leaf Tower. There's a tragedy has struck our people. We were surrounded at the Cerro Gasso. There, trying to figure out what Shar was doing there when the Astral Sea flew into us and forced Lionheart, our great ship that held the Admiral, or had held our Navy together. Our flagship fell into the Saragossa as nearly with almost all our elven ships. They have never been heard from since, and it's been days. We can't reach them or contact them. Now, the rest of our forces are spread throughout the Astral Sea, and we're slowly making our way back to Solaris Sphere to regroup. But we've taken a mighty blow. We've reached out to our Astral Brethren, Emperor Zavon of the Zaraxian Empire for help, our Astral Elves. Hopefully they can lend us a hand here because this is new to us. We have never been here to the Astral Plane. Wow, that sounds rough. Damn. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, uh, that my group and I, the Bonded, will uh, uh, would uh, agree to help you, but uh, obviously we have to like listen to these others' uh, uh, concerns and questions before we make anything concrete. Um, but yeah, so could you like give me any sort of like more finer details about the uh, uh, what happened? It's there's really it's. We do not know what happened and why the Phlogiston was absorbed into the Astral Sea. Um, it's like, almost like they weren't really thinking it through or something, the Zolithid, who did it. And it's created a whole bunch of problems for, uh, for us who were living in the Phlogiston now to come to grips with. Um, but it flew us those we were surrounded the Saragasso because we knew 
the crystal creation was being used to shatter these spheres and we were waiting for and trying to keep it from leaving the Saragasso. But when the Astral Sea hit us, it flew our ships in into the Saragasso. And once they went in, that's it. We lost all contact. We don't know where anything is there. So we are here to make an alliance with all of our enemies right now to focus on these Alithid who have now become one of the most powerful forces while we while we regroup at Solar Sphere. Like you're gonna have a, like, an alliance with the enemies including those guys there and Joan kind of like points at the uh the orcs and whatnot. Well we would like to, but it is up to them too. They, let's just say, we have a, a history with them. Some would say a dark side for us as the elves. Uh, I don't really want to go into it too much, but we, we destroyed them pretty good and I could see why they would harbor some resentment towards us. And let's, while you're talking there, let's go to Jay. What are you doing, Jay? Uh, Jay's apparently doing a drinking contest. Okay, so let's roll with a constitution check for my boy. He sits down, he introduces his name is Kartug Dugash, and he's like, ah, uh, please sit down. Order a drink, and there's 10 mugs there. And he pours one in, and constitution check. Boom, a two. And apparently, he's feeling it already. Uh, he needs three failed here out of 10. Uh, you don't, don't need, to, need to roll. roll. <laughs> yeah, I was perfect for this, this is great. I know. Yeah, so, James just chugging it, it's like, man, I'm gonna need to go to the bathroom see so many. much. How many drinks he gets for you? Okay, so it's uh, it's a simple ten or higher here for his fails. So he drinks the second one. His third one's a fail. So one more fail. Oh, and he's down after four beers. Not very good. Clank, get you out of your passive perception. He holds up the thimble, uh, and he goes. He gives you a wink. Jay winks back. <laughs> and the rest of the scroll go, That was not impressive at all, Commander. Uh, well, and they push him to the side a little bit while he recovers. He's like, We wish to form an alliance with you to protect you and the rest of our people who have been scattered around. We know these illithid have forced us into this astral sea and we wish to fight alongside you against these Olympic. Now, uh, I believe that I do not, hmm, I'm not the best diplomat. I'm usually not the person who makes these deals for our group, but I believe the one who does is either gambling, getting drunk, or doing both right now. Um, so I must add, Yes, uh, I, we, <laughs> I should have brought him over. Do, do you have any specific tasks you wish of us to do if we were to join this alliance other than kill Edward? Just tell us where to go and what you need from us. Of course, we are independent. We will give you uh, advice in, on what we see, but we wish to form an alliance, share knowledge share where to go we need to form together those that were part of the phlogiston against these illithid there must be a reason why we are here we just do not know and uh kartog is beginning to shake off his uh inebriation and he's like oh oh, oh. Did, I, did i win uh it was very close but unfortunately he lost well, 
here is to a new alliance. And he holds up his mug. Jay choose. Choose his ball. <laughs> and we'll go to Charles. You're sitting down. The Fry King is like taking notes. What are you saying? And that's why the color yellow makes me sad. Oh, I see. And he says, what does this picture look like? And it looks like uh, a stick figure and like its head is being eaten by like this insect monster. Looks like, like me. Oh, uh, oh, and the last sand drops. And he's like, well, uh, I see that you have some deep seated clack, 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 issues. And that will be 17 gold pieces. How about you talk and we'll call it even? You said, do you need anybody to talk to? I said, does anybody else want to talk to us? Oh, ah, well, just call it even then. And he clips his notepad together and says, onward to the others. And he gets up and he walks. Here, wait, 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 wait. Here's a uh, here's 19 copper pieces. Oh, click clack click click. I mean, take wow, it. such a generous tip. <laughs> and he actually uh, goes to his um, other brethren of Dry Queen, and they all have guitars, and they're actually getting up to walk over to where the Modron is putting away his bass guitar, and uh, and. Looks like these Thry King are setting up shop. So we need to uh, play some music. Cool. Well, I'll just go back to the bar. Okay. I'm keeping an eye on the other two groups. You got it. Jurgen? Back to you. Uh, okay. Um, and this sword here is for when I'm like really angry. It gets big. It, it like burns a bit to whatever it cuts and it's really fancy. There's a, a very interesting story behind it if you're interested. That is uh, very interesting. Thank you. Uh, is she at all impressed by my tale of my swords? Um, let's give her a roll here. Uh, 15? Yeah, she's actually pretty impressed. She's like, I've seen many a swords. Those are very impressive. Um, so, uh, where, what are you doing now, and do you have any information about it, why the Astral Sea and the Vlogistan were mixed together? Well, I don't really know how or why, but I know that it happened on uh, this uh, place called Eberron. Mm. Uh, I think that's where it happened. There was, like, this huge conglomeration of, like, Illithids and whatever down there, and um, something about a, a Delkia thing. I don't really know what it is. I think it's like some sort of Eberron evil god. But yeah, that, um, yeah, it was uh, very interesting. She nods. She's like, I have studied about Shard Sphere and Eberron. I know of these Delkia. Yeah. Very dangerous. Now, we have heard that this originated there, and you were from that. And so, do you, can you please fill us in on anything? You're so lost here. If I'm going to be honest, I don't really know much about whatever the ritual was. Uh, what I was doing at the time was I was, this might sound uh, uh, ludicrous, but I was inside a giant robot and I was using it to fight one of these Dale Kier things. Uh, Kevin goes into a, a bit of detail about the fight and everything, and he mentions how he punched it and how uh, it worked much better than he expected. Wow, that is amazing. I do remember hearing my great grandfather was in, in charge of one of these was. But he was missing. He went missing after chasing the Illithid. He was a good man. No pompous in his ways. I wonder what ever happened to him. And she kind of long, uh, just inward thinking and trailing off. So 
Let's go to Jay. Jay. These orcs are drinking and happy and uh, are celebrating their new alliance with you. Um, uh, all right, Jay, after the cheering and everything, you'll like, uh, raise his hand and I say, Now, I must ask, we believe personally, from what I gather, that Astral Sea happening everywhere sucks. It's awful. Things are gonna get worse. Someone out there is collecting powerful magic items or trying to in order to destroy everything. And I say this because I believe that in the coming days, we will all need to band together and face an evil threat. So I would like to ask, do, do you all as commander and as soldiers think that it would be possible to broker an alliance for at least until everything gets situated between this crowd and the Imperial Navy. We must band together, even though what happened at Borka, we will never forget that. We will put it aside for now until we can figure out. Will we work beside them? I don't think our men will. But we will work with, with that you. Is that is all I ask. All we want out of this alliance is to work together to destroy the influence and that you will not attack our allies, wherever they may be, unless you believe they are pricks. Which gets you come to us and we'll kick their ass with you. Agreed. And he holds his uh, hand out. Jay will hold his hand out, his singular hand out to shake. And it is agreed upon. Men. Let's get to our ships. We have a lipid to kill. And they stand up. And as he stands up, he tips over and falls to the side and his men help him back up. And they kind of drag him up. Um, how, how big is this, like, how big is, is there a massive open space in the tavern? Sure, yeah. Yeah, um, so it, to, for Jay's own celebration, uh, Jay, um, basically plays hacky sack with uh, a moat of fire that he hears, then kicks it up and crunch, as he will cast fireball and cast it in celebration at the alliance they just made. Oh man, okay, roll me in athletics or in acrobatics. Yo, I'll try acrobatics. I'll, hopefully this doesn't murder just everyone. A, just a time. Oh, 20. Really good. I mean, That's you're in a bar in space uh, and you're You've decided to literally play with fire. There's no way this could go wrong. It physically yeah. cannot go wrong. I mean, yeah. It, these dry, dry cream are singing a song about this yellow whelk ship uh, under the ocean. And you are just like dancing along to it. And people are starting to clap as you, as you do this. All right. Uh, so, uh, and, and, Gareth is laughing. He's he's like he's like slides over some coins over to uh, to one of his uh, soldiers. Like you won this one. As the orcs leave planks, what are you guys doing? Right, everybody all settled. We ready to get on to our next meeting. Uh, how's Kerrigan? Did you manage to do an alliance? Broker an alliance with them? Uh, DM. Yeah. Did I manage to do anything like that? Or what's like? Was I only just, I was just only really hitting on her, wasn't I? Like the whole time. I was like, really just hitting on her, but she kind of informed you that the Imperial Navy has been decimated and they are regrouping and wish to form an alliance with the Bonded to help repel the, uh, the Illithid and are open to working with the scrow, but are trepidatious about the scrow actually taking, uh, working with them since what they did to the scrow. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna respond with, yeah, they uh, they want a, an alliance with pretty much anyone they can get to that aren't the illicit. Uh, even the scrow, uh, from what I understand, the Imperial Navy did something to him a long while ago, and uh, 
that's why they're cautious about the screw in general. I don't know what it was, but it seemed like it was a real big deal, even to, to her. Is the is the Elven woman still in the room? Yeah, she's right beside the room. All right, um, excuse me, miss. Um, I feel like it must be clear. I have, in case it was not obvious, I have just brokered an alliance with the Skrull. Um, and though, uh, what I can tell from the Skrull is that they also really did not like this event that happened at uh, Orca. We, I believe, are in agreement that we will share knowledge and advice with each other and help each other fight the Ithlids. Would you agree to an alliance such as that? We, we would. We, I have been tasked to create an alliance with, with you, and if the Skrull will accept this, then we definitely will. I believe that what the Skrull said is they will work with you, they will not work beside you, but I think the same is it's most likely likewise, yes? Right. And we also have our astral brethren that we will are reaching out to, and we will talk to them as well. Um, all right, good. Um, and like I will say to the Skrull, um, this alliance means that, uh, you will not attack our allies, and if you think that our allies are a bunch of pricks, tell us we will attack them with you. Um, and also, uh, personally right now, things are about to get way worse, most likely. So, as long as you just... We're not saying you can't fight the Skrull in the future. I'm saying that try to broker an alliance at least until everything is done, and then you can go on with your war. Uh, the orcs have left the nation. Yeah, I know. He's just saying that, saying later, because we're not... We don't, we're not involved in that alliance. Yeah, and I believe that's... Um, Charles, you're smart. Do you have any other terms you want to put up forward? I think that that basically covers it. Don't attack each other and uh, come to us if you have problems with the other one. Oh, if you find a crazy, insanely mega magical, universe shattering uh, magical crystals, uh, come get us. Yes, if you find any questions, uh, yeah, if you find anything called Crystals of Creation, or if you hear anything about a man named Jack Daniels, <laughs> please let us know, because those are very important and vital. Yes. And he agrees, certainly. Uh, we will let you know. Oh yes, and Jack Daniels is not to be trusted, of course, do not trust a thing he says. Uh, Charles, do you have anything, anyone, when you say not to trust? I mean, your, uh, your uncle cousin is dealt with, right? Nothing. Uh, yeah, yeah, it, K, okay, it was a nephew, um, yeah, he should be dead. Um, gods, what's Texas sister's name? Uh, Sarah. Sarah, her, yeah, yeah, that's too, I think that's a very common name among humans. <laughs> I don't think Sarah will do anything, um. A Sarah working for a Lady of Loss, that would... Don't trust her as well. Um, yeah, that that's basically uh, everything. Um, oh, and now I have a question. Um, why are we... Why do you guys know about us? Why are we, like, important? We're, like, one ship. You are one ship, but you are holding together the universes. We now that you are bonded to these spheres. You you are holding the arcana signature of these realms together. Without you being there, these realms might just disappear. They if it had their way. They want you. They want these crystals. Follow-up question. Which person's been spreading around that information? I thought we were supposed to... I mean, we, I think we've actually kind of been obvious about our hunt, but weren't we supposed to keep it secret at one point? And Jay, like, turns to Kirgan and Charles. That was a while ago. Wow. Damn, I, I completely forgot about it. How long have we 
How have we even been in, like, space? Yeah, we've been in space for a while. I remember when the big... Don't you remember the good old days when the biggest enemy fought was a flesh monster? And, like, that was it? Oh, yeah. Oh, simple times. Uh, <laughs> I was... It was, like... I don't know. It almost feels like it was, like, a year ago. Oh, the like, staff uh, was from a rival clan. I still have the staff. Is a magic staff from a rival clan, and that was a big deal. And now but, it's like imperial, man. This is crazy. Yeah. yeah, it's like I don't remember when I got used to all of this compared yeah. to the normal shit I was just doing. I was just like living in the fucking woods, and now I'm I'm on a spaceship saving the universe. That I it's did, wild. I've buildings higher than one story were a legend to me when i arrived and met you guys it was that that was crazy i was used to igloos like that city we were just in was like two miles tall i i just looked at that and i was like oh cool because like all the other shit i've seen in the past months has just been like pretty insane like there was a giant god ball i was like kidnapped by a centaur because i was like the chosen one or something there's a there is a lot of fucking chosen one things out there about us isn't there like, I, yeah. I know we've, we've mentioned that before but man. there's a lot out there and we've gotten kind of used to being them because Nothing against the Imperial Navy, and I don't mean to make light of your situation, but you just said almost all of your entire Navy, which is the biggest Navy in space, fell into a space portal. And we just kind of went, yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah, it sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yeah, like, man, um... Anyway, we gotta, like, talk to Jason, like... I'm gonna start heading that way. And they do want us to bring crystals, right? That sounds yeah. like it. Alright, cool. Alright, uh, and Jay will stand up, uh, and I guess head back to the ship to pull out these nuclear weapons that we can just wield, uh, <laughs> to bring to... Just, yeah, keeping his in his pocket. Yeah, Clank, Clank is ways to use it. It is always good to see. Please come back again. I'm sure we will. You head back outside. There's hundreds of people, thousands of people. Ships are start slowly making their way out back onto these asteroids, filling it up. It's a huge bazaar of different types of uh, wild space creatures. GIF are there huddled around asking for gunpowder there. You walk by and there's this jello looking man made out of slime and he's just walking, walking by you. Uh, there are the scroller off to the side. Uh, Gareth claps you on the back and says, I'm heading to the tents. We'll, uh, we'll meet up later. Good luck where you're heading. We'll, we'll, we'll stay in touch. And he heads back to his tents. Uh, so you guys are heading to your ship? Uh, yeah, we gotta go down to the spooky vault. Okay. As you get there, Timmy's folding up his table. He's like, guys, uh, sold all out. Nice. Uh, oh. how much money did you make? Uh, do I have to, uh, tell the truth here? Uh, just give us a vague estimate. Uh, That's really all we need. We want to know in case, because our ship's been just got messed up, so it needs a little bit of repairs. Well, the thing is, it's not all gold. I also got some, uh, some upgrades to the ship here, so we're gonna, we're gonna get that. This blue guy, he's called himself a Mercane. He says he can hook us up, so, uh, Got some upgrades to the ship coming, and also 50,000 gold pieces. Oh! Yeah. Look at nice. Guys, yeah, let's, let's just hope that we don't have any um, uh, new addicts for this rare and uh, exotic drug that... Uh, let's just hope that no one comes and tries to get more of us you're from us. You're really not helping us. You're 
that's why we don't have you selling this stuff. Get on the ship, and he, uh, <laughs> he hands each of you five hundred. Oh, hey! So here you guys Oops, go. Oh, this is your part. We can buy a whole one good health potion with this. <laughs> <laughs> wow! I have a grand total of five hundred and seven gold and five <laughs> silver. Oh, five hundred five gold. I think I, I bought like one time, maybe a drink. Listen, and guys. That was it. Am I allowed to count my check for five hundred zonets in my money count? <laughs> Listen, we can cash it any day. <laughs> That's paper money up here. Uh, J- Jace is uh is just laying back, uh, sitting back, uh, check actually checking out the helm. It's like sitting down, and saying, you know, I never really flew one of these things. Never really had to. Kind of fun. It's kind of like um, a better like, ship. Yeah, uh, a lot might be fun. Please don't mess with our ship right now. I don't want to accidentally have you crash it. It is very delicate. You got it. The control's not the ship. Yep. Timmy's starting to hand out uh, sacks of gold, like, a smaller than what you have to each of the crew members. And they're like, oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Toak's like, holding it, he's like, oh, I could buy something with this, and, uh, you know, uh, Rocker's got some, Phil's got some, and he's just handing it out. He's like, you guys all deserve this. Thank you. All right. Jay gives a thumbs up. <laughs> thumb up. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry, one singular <laughs> thumb up. Timmy, did that Mercan offer, like, does he, did he say he knew a prosthetic arm? Because I'm really missing my extra arm right about now. It's kind of a pain. I think Charles, uh... Yeah, I could, I could make you one, but it only lasts for a little while. Well, I think he passed Joan, actually. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, you did. Okay, so what are you guys doing? Well, um, I think we're about to go, uh, Jay will go over to the vault, uh, okay. unlock it and uh, go down and make sure everyone has their specific nuclear weapon. Okay. Uh-huh. Everybody roll me a uh, wisdom saving tool, please. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I knew this was going to happen. Uh, 15. As long as... I have mine already. Uh, you, yeah, you have yours, but please roll me a uh, wisdom saving tool. Right. Right. That's a fail from That's Jay. A fail for you, Jay. Oh, that, that is a nine. And a nine. So yeah, it makes sense. The guy with his on it isn't crazy. Yeah, but. Yeah. <laughs> the dice, the dice know it. Um, so you have this overwhelming feeling that you felt before. Sometimes you could break free, Jay, and sometimes you can't. Same thing with you, Kurgan, but go with Jay right now. And you go to your spirit gem, and as you touch it, an image appears in your head and you see a massive army of organic metal monstrosities beginning to fly out of this off this planet and begin to fill the space a huge army and you just know the name of this planet is called Brexia. Phyrexia, you said? Phyrexia. Phyrexia. Phyrexia, sorry. Yeah. Phyrexia. Don't worry, it's fine. Um, I'm gonna spell it, uh... P-H-Y-R-E-X-I-A. Yeah. So, and you, you see that, and you break free from that image after you see that, and you have the spirit gem in your hands. Kirgan. You touch the Greystone of Garga, and you feel that the threads that are tying the unique university of Crinspace right, are slowly being rewritten somehow. Be that a new language. I don't. It's hard to explain, but. The rules that govern the Arcana and of Crimspace are slowly being rewritten, and soon 
what you know of Crin Space will be totally different. Interesting. Oh. And Charles, you have the option to see an image or not. You have total oh, yeah. control. Yeah, he's seeing. Okay. So you have the heart of Sigurus. Yes. And it calls you to touch the orb and to see this image, you must touch it. So I assume you reach in. Yeah, I'm, I'm reaching down and down. And the arcana energy like tingles your arm and all of a sudden you see this image of the three progenitor dragons you have, Everon, Sybaris, and Kyber. But there was a fourth progenitor dragon that flew away from Eberron and deep into the ethereal realm. And this progenitor dragon was a solar dragon. Okay. An ancient solar dragon. All right. That's cool. All right. What are you guys doing? We got our goodies. Oh, and the orbs call for you to, to take them with you to the Radiant Citadel. Yeah, yeah. I'll put it back into my uh, component pouch. Okay. And the others? Anyone else to see a weird vision of death and destruction? Uh, oh, no. I, I felt mm-hmm. that the magic of Crim Space, the, uh, the threads of reality there were being woven into a different pattern, and in the near future, that magic and also Kroon space in general will be changed to such a degree that it will be pretty much unrecognizable. I also have a new appreciation and knowledge of how magic works. So that's interesting. Yeah, go you. Hmm. Yeah, um... So a massive army of, um, flesh and metal beings just flew off a place called Phyrexia. They didn't look friendly, but so I'm gonna assume on the fact that they didn't look like normal people, they're probably with the Ithalid. If we're sharing any of this with the Skrow and the Emissary, should we tell them about that right now before we go to the Radiant Citadel? Um... Yeah, it might be a good idea to warn them of the things we've just seen. I don't, I don't know if the, you say you saw a new dragon? Yeah, a progenitor dragon from, uh, well, you know, Eberron, Sabris, and, uh, what's the last one's Kyber. name? Kaiba. Kaiba, yeah, and then, uh, there was this, uh, a solar dragon, and, uh, we walk into the three plane. Solar dragon? Yeah. Are they supposed to be colors or gems or metals? No, I mean, typically that's kind of why I was so impressed by it. All right, so this, we're in the Astral Sea. Um, uh, Charles, does everyone have a thing about saying names, summoning people? Like you say their name, they're going to appear next to you or whatever. Like that's sort of uh, thing. Yeah, as, but does Charles know about any sort of That'd be intelligence. Yeah, history or anything. What? Just intelligence? intelligence? Yeah. No, history. history. You, got, you can give me a history if you want intelligence oh. or history. Oh, yes. Well, that's a no. I'm not, not that I know of. But, uh. So. Who knows? So, way back when, this was before I met you, um. This was super long ago. Um, I had an ability to kind of like go into a new realm when I meditated. It's I, it's how I met Jace. Um, and so I met a dragon creature kind of thing. It had feathers. Did your thing had feathers? I remember it wasn't quite scales. It was weird. Did nothing have feathers? Uh, no, it did not. Okay. Okay. No, no, no feathers. All right, well, this is a different creature, but since you're around, um, 
don't trust a scaled, feathery dragon creature named Ugin or Ifrin. Ugin and Ifrin. Okay. It's uh, that it, they they refer to the same creature. I gave him a name, um, and I, I forget which one I gave him. It's been a minute, but I gave okay. him a name, and he and he had a name, but I wasn't supposed to give him a name. It was a very bad idea, apparently. And I, one point, I remember discovering he left. So just yeah. in case you see that, very careful. Try not to get yourself killed by an ancient dragon of some kind. You got it. You got it. Thanks for the heads up. To the Radiant Citadel. Radiant Citadel. Oh, uh, first. And Jay will um, go over to our, like, sending orb we have on our ship. Yo. Um, and basically, <sighs> first, uh, send to Scrow that um, if they have anyone in Kryn space, that's about to change a lot. And that... Um, a massive army of metal monstrosities, organic metal monstrosities, just left Phyrexia. Will and you'll send that, that to? I will send that to both the leader of the Scrow and okay. the Emissary. Okay. I'm basically the same message to both. I thank you back uh, for the information. Um, Timmy stops by you, Charles, and says, I know you, this is, it's been a rush, but I had this made. Uh, and here you go. And it's a box. Uh, he hands it to you. Oh, uh, thank you. I'll go ahead and, well, once, once I walk away, I'll open it. Okay, and you open it, and it is a bracelet with uh, a black hey. dragon holding onto a white dragon holding onto a green dragon. Each one's biting its other, his tail. Mm. Oh, hey, uh, thank you. It's like, welcome to the crew. Time. And, uh, I wish you, uh, now I have to make another one for this other guy. Uh, back to work. Thank you. No, oh, thank you. And, uh, no, there you go. Thank you. And I'll just immediately start talking on it. Testing, testing, testing. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, hey! Hey, you got your thing! Oh, uh, it's awesome! Uh, I guess oh, now you're officially part of the main crew. Yeah, one second. And I'm going to hold my copper wire, and I'm going to talk into both of them at the same time. Oh, no. Ah, uh, so uh, yeah. very Yeah, is it microphone <laughs> feedback? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's perfect. It's a, ah, it's ah a, my ears. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Cool, 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 cool. cool. <laughs> now it's the way it's in and out. Oh, now Jesus, it's the yeah. Jason, Jason's like, he thought uh, up a hammock and he's like just laying down and he's like just juggling uh, these different colored orbs in his hand. He's like, finally sees you disappear. Hey, what are you doing? Come I'm on, waiting. You gotta hurry. Let's go. <laughs> I've been waiting. Let's get moving. And uh, you make your way towards this. Uh, this giant crystalline structure where there is, they're filling cattle and different in, uh, animals into this bottom section of the building. It looks like the bottom building like disappeared and it's translucent and you can walk through it. And as you get into it, the middle section is hollow and there are different levels all the way up. And as you look at the very top, there are uh, hundreds and hundreds of different sections you can sit in around this circular cylindrical hollow shape. And the smell of animals and sweat of uh, like, people, hundreds of people are around you as Jace is like, well, they really didn't give us first class here, did they? Yeah, this kind of sucks. Don't be real. And a couple of people are goes, all right, we're going to be leaving soon. It seems like our honored guests have finally arrived. I am your clavager and here to take you to the ethereal plane and Onward to the Radiant Citadel. 
and all of a sudden it pulls a lever and that and translucent translucent wall becomes a full wall behind you and the building begins to shake a little bit lifts off the asteroid and smoothly moves up towards the astral sea in the fog swirling around you and it begins to disappear into a portal and and now it appears almost instantaneously like almost like you blinked and now instead of that colorful swirl of different multicolored clouds this one is more of a darker purple hue uh and the ethereal plane it, you are now in the ethereal plane and he explains the cloud journey welcome to the ethereal plane this is where you are we are connected closest to the elemental planes this is the border of the ethereal just close close enough to the material plane where you are not in deep into the ethereal plane and up ahead as you can see is the radiant citadel and and then all of a sudden the lavender stops and goes hmm that's interesting i haven't seen that before Fucking mind flus, I swear to God, Kurgan, if we oh, have to fight ghosts. I hear that. Everywhere we go. <laughs> <laughs> that person looks next to you. He's uh he's an older gentleman. He's got a cart and uh full of there's like these vegetables and on it's like this bird cage and he's looking at you and he's like, Really? You fought uh a lithid? Yeah, I've yeah. personally decapitated mind flares. Uh, I think Kurgan's disintegrated some. Uh, I mean, that sounds like something I would do, but I, I forget how I did it. That's yeah. Um, so do, are we thinking Jack Daniels, Ithalid, or someone else? Who's betting on what right now? Uh, five, um, five, gold, five gold says Ithalid on my book. <laughs> uh, ten silver, or seven silver says something new. I'm gonna say some magic effect. Kirgan's gonna be figuring on his uh his stone and maybe or rather his uh crystal of creation. And he's gonna be thinking that there's another sort of magical thing happening here, like yeah, something in space, like a magic thing. And the old guy goes, uh I'm going with uh Astral whales. Oh, that's interesting. That's, a, yeah. that's ridiculous. I don't. I don't think that's it yeah. at all. I mean, we've encountered astral whales before, haven't we? Aren't they called like Kindori or something? Correct. Like, was yeah. it the one with the halflings on the back? The gnomes, princess of princess of the gnome. Ah, the gnomes. Yeah, you're right. You're right. God, that was so long ago. It feels Remember like it was last three year. of them hopped onto your ship, and they were yeah. with us. For, are they still with us, or did they ever? No. Find the way they, back. They, they, they left. I believe we yeah. gave, we threw them in somewhere else. <laughs> the, uh, the parents jumped on board and grabbed them and brought them back. Oh, God. How old were they? Were they, were they essentially gnomish children? 16, 17. Teenagers and gnomes. Oh, God. That makes all of like the, them following me around feel even more awkward. Oh, no. So, as you look up at this gemstone, so what you see is this beautiful, large gem. But as you see it glowing white in this picture, it's actually dim and very, there's no light coming from it. And there's a city based on what looks to be like some type of fossilized creature that has wrapped itself around this gemstone. Um, and as this skyscraper of a building is coming closer, around this, this crystalline city is this black cloud ominously almost encircling it. And reaching down from this black cloud are these crystalline vines that are slowly reaching towards the Radiant Citadel. So I don't think that's a whale. Um, I don't think that's a mind flayer. 
Oh, it's got a weird sort of tentacle thing coming out. Maybe it's a giant crystal mind flayer. We don't know yet. The important thing is that bat says new stuff. But until we get to the Citadel, I'm not going to say anything. Mind flayer could pop up at any time. But once we get to the Citadel, I'll give you five gold drops. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Deal's a deal.